The artist George Beatty in 1956 was presented with a very specific problem. In the new Department of Agriculture building, directly across the street from the state capitol, he was commissioned to create a series of paintings which would be on display for anyone who came in the building to see that dealt with agriculture in the state. And over the course of these eight paintings, he decided to focus on the history of agriculture in the state for the four paintings in the lower lobby. And for the four paintings in the upper lobby, he wanted to focus on modern agriculture, contemporary agriculture of the 1950s. Um, the ones for the 1950s have their own issues, but we really, for this display, have decided to focus on the four history paintings. The four paintings that dealt with the history of agriculture in the state of Georgia about the past. And in doing so, we immediately come up against the question of whose history. History by its very nature is a contested ground, and because these are history paintings, their subject matter, their meaning, becomes complicated and contested. So that's part of the reason we're doing this display, is to deal with some of those issues as they relate specifically to George Beatty's paintings for that Department of Agriculture building. So the problem facing George Beatty was how do I depict the history of agriculture in the state of Georgia? What do I show and what do I omit completely? So he made some very conscious choices. Perhaps the two most controversial ones are the two slavery images. What Beatty elected not to show was the horrors of slavery. There are no beatings, there are no shackles, there are no disillusions of black families as a result of separation and the selling of slaves. Uh, those are things that he has completely left out. What he instead focuses on is the idealization and the heroization of the black figures in those images. And in doing so, he's referencing, in fact, an art historical past. Uh, for example, in the image depicting the sugar plantation, Beattie directly references, he literally quotes from Michelangelo, one of the figures that was created by Michelangelo for the tomb of Pope Julius II is commonly referred to as a slave. It is a marble sculpture, and the pose of that sculpture created by Michelangelo is mimicked in the central figure in George Beatty's sugar plantation. So he's making a direct art historical quotation, referencing an historical figure, an idealized male figure, to then become his central black figure of an enslaved person. These figures are robust, they're strong, they're powerful. The dignity of their labor is something that Beattie decides to focus on as opposed to the horrors of their enslavement. One of the other ways that, in particular, I think that Beattie's murals from 1956 are progressive is in the way that he makes subtle visual juxtapositions. And a good example of that is in the cotton gin plantation image of the antebellum era. In the way that he organizes the composition, our visual focus returns again and again to the backs, to the slumped over backs of the African Americans in the images. And at one point he makes very clear with the juxtaposition upon whose backs the wealth of these great cotton plantations emerged from. He makes that literal. He puts the back, the shoulders of one African American enslaved person at the base of the wonderful antebellum house, neoclassical house that you see at the back of the composition. And so just through making that juxtaposition, it's, he's making a political statement about upon whose backs the wealth of cotton era Georgia was made. And so even if he's not being overt in showing shackles and the degradations of slavery, he's being perhaps a little bit more subtle about his political point. One of the other things that I really want to make clear about these, expressing my own opinion about them, my own art historical and curatorial opinion about them, is about the concept of even including pre-European contact American Indians as a subject for an entire mural seems to me particularly progressive for the 1950s. 
and then to focus in such a heroic way on images of African Americans, even as enslaved persons, in segregation era Atlanta, in a building directly across from the Capitol building in downtown Atlanta, to then focus on heroic images of African Americans, even in an enslaved position, seems to me to be especially progressive for 1956. Um, besides the the horrors of slavery that he decides to exclude. One of the interesting exclusions, in my opinion, from the series is the post-Civil War era, really the post-Reconstruction era. There are no tenant farmers and sharecroppers in these history images. He elected not to show that. I think arguably the most problematic of the four history images, in my opinion, is not one of the ones dealing with slavery, but the one image dealing with pre-contact American Indians. There's an idealization there again of the figures, and the focus is really on an idealization of the American Indian women that Beattie has decided to depict in that. And in doing so, again, he's drawing on a long art historical tradition, in particular of depicting the female nude, going back to the ancient Greeks and even earlier to, 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 to earlier works of art. Um, things like the Venus of Willendorf and its focus on the female aspects of fertility. In Beattie's painting, part of the controversy is simply the nudity, but it's a specific kind of nudity. It really is a very voluptuous nudity. And in his depictions of American Indian women, then, he's drawing upon this ancient tradition of the female nude, but then also on a tradition of depicting in the United States, in something like map cartouches, images of American Indian women as idealized ancient figures, stressing their sexuality and their fertility. And for me, that's perhaps one of the more problematic aspects of any of the images, any of the eight images really in the murals, but in particular these four history paintings that, that Beattie deals with. And perhaps if we're looking for an indictment of Beattie in any of the images, it's perhaps the American Indian one.